I think I will. S okay, recording in progress. Got it. Um, I'm just going to start us with a karakia. And I chose this karakia uh, carefully because of the work we're going to do today. But we'll talk about it later. But I'll start us now with that. And just take it as a moment to arrive, hey, so maybe close your eyes and just let yourself kind of land here. Tuia irunga, tuia iraro, tuia iroto, tuia iwaho, tuia te heringa tangata, kato mai te po, kato mai te ao, homie huie, taiki. So welcome everyone to this session, um, welcome to this time of the year, the solstice has just happened, welcome to Matariki, which I tried to see this morning but couldn't. Um, so we'll dive in soon, but I'm going to let Chloe start us now. Hmm. Oh, Morina everyone, and thank you Louise for our karakia this morning. So I call Chloe Howard, Tokonua. My name is Chloe and I'm an associate with the Centre for Social Impact. So I'd like to welcome everyone here to the, um, this morning to the Kia Fiti Tonu series. Uh, this is a free program of 90 minute workshops offered to the community center, uh, sector by the Centre for Social Impact through support from Foundation North. The Kia Fiti Tonu series of online workshops was we launched it in November, 2020. And this was in response to the need of capability and capacity building in community organisations that was identified by the COVID-19 impact survey, which you can find on the CSI website. So the introductory programme covered grant writing, marketing, communications, innovation, strategy and wellbeing. And you can access all of the recordings and the PowerPoint for those sessions on the CSI website. These work workshops have been really well attended and we are really pleased that we've got nine free sessions of the Kia Fiti Tonu series this year. So, so far we've offered sessions on wellbeing, digital technology, communications and governance. And these are sessions are available on our website. And coming up, we have collaboration with Louise Mara and a wellbeing session. These two sessions are open for registration as well. Uh, as we're saying, we are really aiming to make all sessions as accessible and um, because they've been oversubscribed uh, and they're available on the website. So to let you know, and as, as you just got a prompt, these sessions will be recorded and but we won't be recording the breakout rooms. Also, just at the end of the session today, we are asking for your feedback via a survey link in the chat. This is really helpful for us as it helps inform any future program delivery. And the feedback from our last series helped inform this year's offering. So it's really helpful to, to hear directly around the things that you're interested in hearing more about. But just before I introduce our session, I'm just gonna ask you um, all to take part in a poll. This is a really short poll that will just ask you if you've received funding from Foundation North in the last two years. Foundation North is supporting the series and they're just really interested to see um, the number of grantees that are access accessing this, uh, this workshop. I'll just give you a couple of minutes, or seconds actually. So today's workshop is on innovation and strategy, and it's presented by uh, our CSI associates, Louise Mara and Rachel Trotman. I'm gonna hand back over to Louise and to introduce herself and Rachel, but we hope you enjoy the session and um, look forward to any feedback. Thanks. Thanks, Chloe, and kia ora koutou, ko Louise Mara tuku ingoa, ko Naituhoi, Menati Pākehā, Oku Iwi, ko Melbourne, Rawa, ko Dohati tuku whānau, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. So, fantastic to be here and have such a big group. Um, I'm very passionate about this topic and... Um, I've kind of worked in systems, on systems change for most of my life. And um, 
right now I'm just hugely interested in working in the area of rest restoration, restorative systems, and um, how the healing of individual and collective trauma really releases kind of full human individual potential for our um, for the challenges of our time. So I work a lot on climate trauma, decolonization, I did, I'm doing some work in Black Lives Matter, and these big movements for change. Um, and wildly interested in how if we don't change the way we do strategy and we innovate ourselves and um, then we're not going to change much. So really appreciate you coming to this session. Um, I'll hand over to Rachel soon, but I'd love as many of you as possible to come on video. It just really helps the group presence and I understand if some of you can't do that, but thanks to those of you who are on video. And yeah, Rachel, I'll pass to you. Kia ora, kia ora koutou, uh, katoa, ko Rachel Trotman, toko ingoa. Just as I introduce myself, I'm just going to ask each of you to put in the chat something you'd like to get out of the session this morning. It would help us to keep an eye on, on why you came and what you'd like to get out of it. Um, I am a Ngāti Pākehā, uh, born and raised in Tamaki Makoto. I'm sitting looking at the Waitakere Ranges in West Auckland. And I've spent the last 20 or so years um, supporting mainly community organisations around strategy, around research and evaluation. So a lot of observation over the years of how people are coming at strategy, um, what's working for people, what isn't, um, and how we need to evolve ourselves and how we approach strategy to get to the kind of transformation we're all seeking for this world. So back to you, Louise, to land us and ground us for our session before we get underway. Yeah, so let's take a few minutes. Um, so much of um, strategy is actually about ourselves um, and how we sort of thread new worlds through ourselves, which is why I loved doing that karakia, tui a i runga, tui a i raro, tui a i roto, tui a i waho. So let's take a moment to do just that because the quality of our container together and the quality of your human relational containers determines such a lot about um, how you how you think the world into being. So yeah, just take a moment to connect to what's below. I love connecting to Papa Tuanuku by putting my roots through my feet into the ground. And connect to what's above. So let's connect to the space, Rananui. There's so much space. We start to feel so overwhelmed, but actually, there's a lot of space. It's one of the big capacities of our time in this space. And then feel that you can connect to yourself. And however you connect to yourself, I just want you to soften it. We often connect to ourselves in a, with a, um, a little tone of kind of harshness or vigilance, just soften it. You'll all be doing your best. And then let's just do a little connective exercise to each other. I just want you to Take a breath from your connection to the earth. And if that's hard, just imagine it. 
And then we come to our heart and just look at one other person on the screen. Let's imagine that we take a breath with that person. It doesn't matter if they don't know who it is. And then let's take another breath, linking us, connecting us to our ancestors, whatever ancestral line comes to you in this moment. And I come back into my heart and I connect to another person on the screen. And then take a moment just to look around you and connect to the space around you. You're all in your own spaces. Orientate and then from that space, again through my heart, I connect to another one of you. Just notice how it is to be in the space for you. However that is, we just welcome it. And we're going to talk about that soon, why we need connected strategies from connected places, not from disconnected. But I'm going to pass back to Rachel and she's going to set us off. Kia ora, Louise. I'm just sharing my screen. We've got a few slides to guide us through. And it's so important to presence and connect and that uh, it's the way we approach things and the way we meet each other is so key to this work. So we are amazing creative beings, but how much of this do we bring to the way we approach our strategy? And how much of ourselves do we bring to this work? How connected are we to our strategies and to the people and the places, the worlds that they relate to? So I'm gonna give an overview of what we're going to explore in this session. In a moment, we're going to take a little bit of time to reflect um, with each other, um, to think about strategy in your context, the role that it plays, when you felt most connected to a strategy and what helps you to connect. Then we're going to look at some of the patterns and the traps around how we currently approach strategy. And I think a lot of those will be familiar to you. And then we're going to move into how could it look different? What are some alternatives, some shifts in our thinking, our principles? What are some of the capacities we might need to create innovative, alive strategy? And then we're going to take a bit of time for you to identify what innovative strategy might look like to you in your context and what some next steps towards that could be. And then we'll end with some ideas on next steps for you to take forward as you wish. So that's the sort of flow for our session. We're going to begin with a small group reflection. So we're going to put you into small groups of three for a 10 minute discussion. So we're going to ask you to introduce yourselves briefly and then to take around three minutes each to just reflect and talk to these questions. So what role does strategy play in your day-to-day -day life? When have you been most connected to a strategy? When I think about that, I think it back to 1996 when I was working at Waitakere City Council in the days of the Eco City, when the Eco City was starting to form. Mayor Bob Harvey said, right, we're gonna be an Eco City and people from right across the council spent two days in a warehouse together dreaming up what an eco city could look like. And that was some of the most energizing um, approach to strategy that I've been a part of. And what helped me to connect were um, 
that very short vision, the aspirational, transformative scenario of an eco city, um, the values sitting around that, being with other people who wanted to support that transformation. And then we're going to ask you just how do you connect to that place in you in terms of what connects you to strategy, whether it's values, vision, the, the way it's presented, the way it's communicated. How do you connect to that place in you? Is it a body connection? Is it through your head? Is it a feeling? Is it through your senses? Is it a visual thing for you? Just want you to check in on that. And when we come back, we're just going to ask you to put in the chat what helps you to connect to strategy. And we're going to use that to pull together as part of the resources we give you after, the things that help people to connect to strategy. So are there any burning questions about that before we go into our 10 minute uh, breakout? No? Okay, so Amy's going to put you in those small groups and we'll see you in 10 minutes time. Okay, welcome back everyone. We'll just give a few more chance to arrive back. Yeah, so love to see some um, comments, thoughts in the chat around what connected you, what, what connected you to a strategy? What were those factors? And we're going to kind of build some word clouds out of this. So I love to um, just see, because we've had so many strategies, like I was amazed at 2020. There were so many 2020 strategies of how the world would be different, and we hadn't done it. Not through lack of strategy, <laughs> through lack of something else. So oh, beautiful people. Just going to read these. Have a look in the chat, everyone, as they're coming in, because these are big factors clarity, brevity, heart, vision, people, purpose, beingness, being part of the co design and reviews, belief you're doing something extraordinary, why are we doing what we're doing, tika pono aroha what you're passionate about, being part of something extraordinary, visuals, seeing the project as a wider whole, values and passion, panic, <laughs> Richard. Okay, sometimes <laughs> let's include panic. I haven't seen that before. People being, I know what you mean though, authentic, bringing enthusiasm rather than their own egos, allowing time, identified the horizon we are swimming towards shared values clarity heart picture of potential and the why accessibility people with open minds no baggage keen to find ways to achieve together helping others these are all beautiful involvement and development ownership relating possibilities come Wow, there's so much in there. I'm going to stop reading, but we're going to capture all of that because just have a look because here are so many of the core factors that are needed. So often when we're designing strategy, we somehow can often get into a disconnected space that we've got to have a strategy, but actually it's the connection to the strategy that matters more. So someone put their culture eat strategy for breakfast. We're going to go through that, but there's beautiful things in here and we want to turn them into something and send them back to you. So yeah, we're really harvesting this connected strategy. So over to you, Rach. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Louise. So I'm going to take us back to our slides. And 
I'm going to talk about what's going on now. Why do we need to change? It's pretty clear why we're frustrated around our current strategies. Collectively, our strategies are not getting us to where we want to be. They're not working for too many people. They're not working for the planet. We know we need to transform and we're in a transition phase and we're all looking for ways to support that transition. Um, and it takes courage to move us out of older ways of thinking or being that aren't working for us, that aren't helping us. So with our interest in transformation and change in a better world, strategy is a good place to start. Some of the things that um, can keep us stuck. Um, let's see how many of these resonate for you. Whose strategies and outcomes are being pursued? Are you tracking towards your own aspirations or are you chasing funding or stuck in contracts? Um, do you reflect, learn and adapt as you go? So often we just keep doing what we've always been doing and we don't take the time to reflect and really go deep on what's going on and how things need to change. Building our capability. Uh, I know in the community sector there's a lot of struggle around resourcing the mahi and that includes resourcing the people who are doing the mahi. Um, more and more organisations are saying to me we know that the quality of our work depends on the well-being of our people. And a mental health and addiction service manager said to me recently, my whole strategy is to focus on the well-being of my team. Because if they're okay, the work's going to be great. Are you getting sidetracked in your strategy? Distracted? Um, is our mindsets rigid or stuck? And whose perspectives are being reflected? Whose voices and perspectives are absent? Are your strategies being led by, by you and your service? Or are they being driven from the people that you're working to support? Do they reflect what's going on in the ecologies that you're working with? If you're an environmental um, focally focused organization, where's nature coming through? How's that speaking into your strategy? In our Western dominant model, we tend to break the whole into the parts and deal with the parts rather than focusing on the connections in the whole. So we tend to operate from places of separation, from silo of competition, of non-engagement. How do we come back to a connection mindset? How do our strategies um, work to heal the trauma of colonization? How do we see our own biases and what we're doing? How are we tackling systemic racism? How is stupidity showing up in our strategies in a genuine way? Oops. Let's go back down. Some of the tendencies Quite often, when we're faced with complexity, we can tend to either shut down or try to simplify the issues with a, a linear compartmentalized approach. So our results are usually quite narrow at best. Our strategies need to help us navigate uncertainty, ambiguity and complexity, not try and mask the complexity. Quite often we see strategies, people wanna be the best at something, um, I often see um, detailed planning around goals that are way high level, um, unrealistic, or not actually that connected to the day-to-day -day work of the organisation. Strategies can be ignored or not present in people's uh, organisations, um, can be blind to their own shadows, aren't addressing what's going on for the people and, and culture. Quite often they're also done in a, in a room by a few people with little input from the people they're there to serve. Over to you, Louise. 
Yeah, so as we go into this section about how do we enliven this part of our um, organisation and how do we kind of innovate, I just want you to all feel into the part of you that innovates. It might sound um, strange, but just feel into what part of me innovates. And what part of me strategizes? Like, just see if you can feel that part of you, because it actually is a part of us. Notice what it feels like in your body to access these parts. And then have a feel into the part of you that just gets shit done, <laughs> like the tasks. That's a different part. See if you notice what that feels like. It's kind of more arrow-like for me. And so we'll come back to this, but it's quite an important thing because often leaders, I work a lot in leadership, we project that everyone else should be strategic and innovative. <laughs> I did actually work for a government department in charge of innovation at some point who thought everyone should innovate, but never themselves. So like, let's not do that. Hey, eh? How do we bring this as a way of being? And that's, that's where we're at. And in some ways, like there's been a lot of thinking about what they call, you know, the fourth revolution. Um, you know, we're in the fourth big revolution, but I think it's largely around technology, but I think we're in such a massive social revolution, a social evolution. So some of what we get, I'm going to talk about isn't necessarily new, but I think it's still new that it's the way of doing things. It's not new yet of the, it's not new of the way of thinking about things, but we're not necessarily seeing many people do it. So there's a bit of a lag. So of course, COVID has helped this, but uncertainty needs to be part of our strategy. And so much of what um, I believe, and I love, you know, I was talking to an iwi up north the other day, they have a thousand year dream for their uh, marae and area, thousand years, but they don't know how to get there, but they're gonna follow the tohu and they're gonna follow the wairua. So they're gonna, they know where they're heading, like these big dreams, hey? And then actually we're going to work with certainty and uncertainty and work with the energy as we, as we find our way there. So it's not that they don't have a guiding star, these new strategies. They really need it. But visions were a corporate tool of com competition between organisations that came in in a very corporate competitive area and then it's been kind of adopted by the community sector but I'm really in favor of these dreams the moi moi are that can be co-created co-created with stakeholders co-create what where are we heading what's our really guiding star and as Matariki Raisa say what's our what's our collective star set that we're heading to and that's such an important thing that we co-create that. And then the, if the people in our organisation can find their own dream in that dream, not that you have to buy into the vision, which is so narrow, and as Rachel said, as often we want to be the best at. Like, I just think that's unacceptable in our world today. Sorry, I'm a bit of a radical, but our our vision is just about beating everyone else do you know what I mean like our dream we need big dreams of society right now so so how do we set these and how do we do them together and how do we let people align their dreams because that alignment becomes such a major thing and then 
you all know about prototyping, but I'm so in favour of prototyping as a way of adapting. And it's a disciplined process, but it's not a pilot process because pilots you do, you finish, you evaluate. Prototypes, you set off an evolutionary waka to your dream. We're setting off an evolutionary waka. And then we're going to move with the tides, with the flow. We're going to adjust as we go. We're going to see that uncertainty is part of our strategy. And that's why capability culture matters so much. Because are we just following a plan that as soon as we've printed it is already out of date? Or have we got the capability to really read the signs? So this prototyping becomes such a major thing. Um, I'll just say a few more things before I go on to this. Sorry, Rachel. Um, I saw that Rosie put something in around visual. They're creative. Like we're creative beings. We're coming out of such a stultified era of boxes. But how do we put those dreams into creativity, into visual, into nested holes? How do they link how does our dream link with other dreams? Um, yeah, what, what's, the, um, what's the ecosystem we're all in, including the natural world, even if we're in the social area, how do we, how does it fit into a nourishing of the whole? So we're all as individuals, holons of a whole, all organizations are holons or, or microcosms of a macrocosm how do you recognize the broader ecosystem so i believe we've all got to head towards holistic strategies it's never been true that people can just heal without the environment healing so how do we get beyond these silos of social economic environmental blah 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 so the shifts for our time we wrote some shifts um you know we've I haven't heard it for a couple of years, but a lot. Eh? What's your own five-year strategy for yourself? You know, um, what's our five-year strategy? But shifting that to an alive strategic direction, an alive dream that we're always testing, experimenting. And I love the story of the old navigators. I, I've been up north and I saw the Coupe exhibition and just how they lay on the floor of the waka to feel the rhythm of the seas to know what was coming, how they watched the tohu, the, the whales and the birds, and they navigated. But you know what? They, they dreamed that they could feel and see that island before they left. They had to embody it. Um, so this is just such a cool thing. And how do we get from this competitive, we just want to be the best social service? Well, that doesn't tell me anything other than that you're competitive. And I know this is changing, but we had a look around and there's still some like that, to compelling, to this is a dream the whole ecosystem buys into. I think compelling is so important. And when I saw those connections there in the chat, and from people are a resource to people are resources. <laughs> like we talk about people as a resource, but let's really resource people for the journey. And yeah, how do we resource ourselves? How do we resource those around us? How do we see this as a resourcing journey? And I've done a lot of training recently in the nervous system. Um, and the optimal place is a resourced human place. And then there's this thing that we're working on the system rather than we are the system working. So to me, this is a vital big shift, hey? Because if you're working on the system, in some ways you're pretending you're not the system. And that's kind of a separated world. But if we're starting to heal from this paradigm of disaggregate but separation, then you are the system. So you as the leader of your system or as a participant in your system, hey, if you restore and nourish yourself, that part of the system gets restored and nourished. If your team does that, otherwise I see so many that are so exhausted trying to fix things out there, but that's a trauma energy. So how do we, how do we be the system working itself out? 
And then the single focused and siloed to this holistic and restorative. And we cannot not see that we're in restorative times, restoring the hurts of the past, restoring the separations and the wrongs. So how do we take this more restorative approach? And that includes our people. The system's always trying to show up through your people. Often strategies are just shoved on a, on a um, you know, shelf. And that's why we're asking you what connected to yours to alive and present. Because we're always living the dream, refining the dream, navigating our way through the dream. Um, Yes, I've talked about the disconnected. And yeah, how do we not rely on the plan to keep us going, but rely on our culture of responsiveness, adapt adaptation, movement? Doesn't mean that we don't plan nothing, but we stay, that's what prototyping is. Okay, we're setting off this waka. We know what it wants to do, but we're staying in touch in real time with what's working, what's not working. And as Rachel said, how do we see if our strategies are subtly recolonizing? How do we help them be decolonizing in this time? These are big shifts. Um, that we're in right now we're in these shifts it's kind of exciting and huge times and someone said this before but culture eats strategy for breakfast lunch and dinner <laughs> like, and it's so true hey how does our culture and the soil we create between us and the connectivity between us become one of our main strategic features our main ways of embodying a dream. So I got so interested in 2020, you know, there was the Organics New Zealand 2020, there was so much hope and we didn't get there. And I think when I feel into that, we didn't have embodiment of those strategies. They kind of remained a bit lifeless but how do we walk a strategy in our beings and there's so much to do around that in our own way of um, being strategic being innovative embodying this dream yeah so culture so some of the elements that we've come up with of this different way of doing strategy, and of course there's um, great literature around this too, but this shared dream, long-term, co-created, embodied. And by embodied, it's that all your people find their own dream and purpose within it. It's a felt sense. I belong here. I belong in this kaupapa. It's mine too. And then you're not having to do so much. These high evolutionary pathways, these waka, okay, we know we need to set off something, um, something that works with our culture. We know we need to send something that really works with res restoration of the ecosystem, something that works with... Um, empowerment of agency of our clients what support do they need to develop their own agency how are we not getting stuck in that kind of perpetration victim um, rescuer model how are we going to have this as both aspiration, I believe today still, and this dedication to this navigational culture and the ca capacities required. The new capacities, well, they're old as well, that we were covering to be able to navigate the complexity of these times. And we need to help everyone do that. And we'll come on to that. Um, how do we watch for the signs? How do we stay in touch for what's working and what's not? And not just react to, um, not just react as well to sometimes what people don't like because it's uncomfortable because so much of this is entering a brave space together. And I do a lot of in-depth work in organizations and it is uncomfortable. And initially people feel like, oh no, we don't want to go there. Actually, if you resource them, 
they come along and are so grateful for the for the journey. Um, maps of your landscape, this idea that you're all part of nested holes. How does your dream work with other dreams? What are the other parts? There was something in one of the slides there that we can partner with distractions. Like I notice also that trying to partner only with philanthropy can be a distraction. Do you know what I mean? Like what are your real partners in this waka? How do we see what actually isn't? Where are we wasting time? Where are our close in collaborators? It's quite a big thing because time is so full. Um, I kind of work with sort of five layers of learning and often learning processes are just in a symptom layer, recreating, gathering evidence, recreating, gathering evidence. But how do we gather evidence from so many more layers of depth um, to be able to move this waka with some ease as we learn what works and not. Um, and it doesn't mean, like I say, this way of being is also a discipline setting up prototypes, setting up these waka, working out the roles and responsibilities with everyone on deck. But these don't need to be rigid, they can move too. As people, as people over time feel like they, they need to adjust how they live that dream within the broader dream. So there's so many ways of adjusting roles and responsibilities. So you don't want to have a, a very um, big dream in this way of operating and then very rigid role descriptions. That's not going to serve you. That's why the culture really matters. And your presentation, the visuals, the, the you know, and, and how can that be co-created? So here's some of the elements that we've seen um, Capacities are such a big thing, hey, um, navigators. How do we help people all be navigators for themselves, for the teams, for the organizations, for this time? And there's so many beautiful things about being a human being that actually helps us sense our way, know when I saw in the chat things about the ego, the ego is our defenses, our wounding. How do we kind of not reject it, but not come from it? They're the trauma highways. How do we come from this more essential place to sense that flow? Because often organizations get stuck in a fight or flight or a freeze. That's never gonna help you collaborate. Even the art of prototyping, how do we do it? How do we learn? How do we build it into our organization as our way of being? Um, yeah, this care of all parts of the system. Hey, no one left out. So again, like we are the system working itself out. We're not working just on the system. And I think there's a capacity in system seeing and being. Once you start to see a system and see the patterns, just like the old navigators, they could see the patterns of the weather changing. They could feel them, they could smell them. So there's a way that we can operate. And this deep listening, how do we deeply listen for also the future that wants to emerge, for what's ready? Where's the energy for change? Can we go there instead of kind of you know, like just banging our heads against a brick wall. And this is restoring how, what, what does restoration for me look like? How do I restore my full and enslaving the wider? How do I, how do I really do that in my system? And how do I help my team do that? And digestion is such an important thing for me. We have so much information coming. It's like in one year, 10 years ago, we get that much information in like 10 minutes. How do I digest my life to have enough space, inner space, so I actually can reflect? And our most, our wisest place is our most relaxed place. It's kind of the only place that can reflect. 
And if we truly knew and believed that, our workplaces would look quite different. Stress is the trauma highway. So we've got to come up with a new way of being. Yeah. So in relationships, everything, hey, is relationships, of course, which so many Indigenous people, so including Te Māori knew, the quality of your relationships um, determine the quality of the work you do because the relationships thread an energetic container that the work happens in. If you've got a very leaky, wobbly container, it's going to limit what you, how effective you are. So this becomes a really important thing. Yeah. Is it back to you, Rich? I think that's my slides. Yeah, so we have some questions for you. Um, and another triad, because we really want you to be able to reflect and process. Um, so we'd be so interested in how does your current strategy make you feel? So we asked you before what, when you've been most connected, but how does your current strategy make you feel? And what would innovative strategy look and feel like to you in your context? Like it might already be there, but if it isn't, ah, what might that look and feel like for you? What are your first steps, do you think, to, to start on this journey? And we'll come up with some next steps as well, but we're just keen to hear yours. And how will you co-create the culture needed for it? And think about those early slides Rachel did. What might you be stuck in? And if you're really stuck in the busy, exhausted, that is a trauma highway. That's not your optimal place. So how might you get out of that? into this deep, reflective, sensing, navigational, experimentational, alive space. So those are our questions for the next try. I think we're going to put you back into the same ones, and hopefully we'll get everyone in this time. And yeah, we've got 12 minutes, which is, um, does that still right, Rachel? Still good for time, eh? It's 15. Yeah, 15 minutes. Yeah, we'll put the questions in the chat again. So just really take the opportunity to, yeah, connect with people. Just explore this for yourself. Amy? Not just yet. Okay. Ah, oh, here we are. Here they come. Okay. <laughs> Yoda, welcome back, everyone. I always find the time goes so fast in these breakout rooms. I hope you um, all had a chance to have some good discussion. We're just going to open up the space now for a bit of sharing. Um, feel free to put in the chat what struck you in that session, particularly about what innovative strategy looks like to you. But we're really just going to open it up now for any kind of key reflections people want to share or any questions you might want to ask about any of the content so far or how you found that last exercise. Louise covered an awful lot. Um, yeah, so anyone got any questions or reflections? Um, I, I do. Yeah. Hey, Kia ora. Um, I, I met some fascinating people in my rooms for starters, and thank you, awesome content, um, amazing workshop. Um, but I guess that my reflection on the last session was that the very the most straightforward and simple thing that I could do, and probably the most powerful, is to recognise that words have power. Um, kupu have a modi of their own, and um, in order to be organic in our approach and, and allowing and adjusting and evolving as we are strategizing we need to um, actually be careful with our language because there is no such thing as failure but mistakes are actually learning opportunities 
So um, if the simplest thing that I could do to change the culture of the environments I work in is actually change the language and be very mindful of that, be conscious of that and reinforce that with the people I work with. There are no failures. Mm. The mistakes are absolutely necessary and that's a br- that means we're doing it right. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah, I love that, Claudia. And, you know, how many of us have this in our being? If I say this, I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> I'm going to get it wrong. It's such a trauma that we all carry. And so to do what you're saying, hey, people need to learn to trust that that's true. And I love that we might be able to grow that trust together that I can still belong if I get it wrong is so big, so big for humans. I, I guess not just that we would belong, but um, actually it's necessary to it's belong. Necessary. Yeah. It's necessary to make mistakes to belong. That's part of what we're doing here. And absolutely it means that you're a leader. It means you're a leader. Love it. Mm. Absolutely. Um, I would, it's Kath here. Hi, I would like to hear more from Garth about his comment in the chat box saying their most effective strategies have emerged not from a think, plan, do paradigm, but from a do think, plan approach. Um, I'd really love to hear more about that, Garth. Yeah, I, um, the we, our, our kind of default approach is often we need to think about this and out of our thinking will come a plan and out of, and then we will implement our plan. And that sounds logical and nice and linear. Um, but, uh, but often that, res- that has resulted, when I look back in retrospect, in either more of the same or more of the same plus 10% um, or something that's not very realistic. Whereas the most effective... Um, uh strategies and most powerful ones that have actually changed things rather than just been you know archival um has has have been when we do something and then realize we're doing something so reflect on it and check is this helping us deepen our values and vision or driving us away from it if it's helping us then let's do more of it or let's double down on it um so that's that's why I call it do think plan. Um, does that make sense? It, it's a bit esoteric, uh, but it's, but we've found it immensely practical. That's uh, great. Do you mean yeah. you're constantly prototyping? Yeah. I guess that's what the yeah. jargonists would call it. Yeah. <laughs> and checking back in, and that keeps you connected as well around the work, doesn't it? If yes, not. yeah, you, you have to have the, the think stage, the reflect stage, because um, otherwise you can easily wander in, off in all kinds of directions. Um, but it makes them very anchored because these are things that you've actually done. So, so there's no question about is it doable, they're, they're done. <laughs> um, it's just do you do more of them or not? Um, and uh, yeah, they, yeah, I'll stop there. I think yeah. it's a, a culture of uh, stepping back it, it, using the, 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 the method you, you, you just mentioned of seeing what is emerging because this is the way you know, our world is. Nothing is set in concrete. It's, it's ability, the capacity to see what is emerging and then move with that. And that's actually um, a, a strategy that is alive otherwise you know the strategy is a bit rigid <clears throat> mm, so constant feeling and checking and reading what's happening yeah we have we have three little sayings um begin with the end in mind so that's the you know the key of having that horizon you're swimming towards um the uh, uh build on strengths um and sense what's emerging um, and that, that are the kind of the mantras to um, keep us focused on that, I think, Peter. Mm, that's nice. 
That's all so beautiful, Garth. Where do, where are you working? Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Turn the mute off. <laughs> um, I, I just left the mute on it deliberately to test people's lip reading skills. <laughs> uh, Perfect. <laughs> But it wasn't a mistake. It was just a test. Yeah. Um, so I, I work for Lead Centre for Not for Profit Governance and Leadership. Great. Yeah, fantastic. What you're saying. Hey, this thing of we're moving, we're learning, we're growing. We're not just sitting doing nothing, waiting for the signs. <laughs> Because we're doing it. It's so cool. I love it. I love your things too. Also, sense what's emerging. Where's the next? Is the next um, energy for change? Um, yeah, beautiful. And there's some comments in the chat around culture. Yeah, it's such a shame in a way that often our organisations that are doing great care in the world um, are often full of very exhausted stressed people and I think we've got to we've got to change that as well hey how do we how do we slow these are urgent times slow down remember our, our wisest place is the most relaxed we can only reflect when we pause mm. any other sharings that was great comments Questions. Just seeing Grant, you were saying something about just finding your comment. Connection between the type of energy in an organization and what will be created strategically. Do you want to say something more about that? Yeah. Um so I firmly believe that if you're creating from a place of anything but openness and calmness and that you'll you'll create more chaos. If you're creating from desperation, you'll create something desperate. If you're creating from uh, an area of deficit, you'll create some sort of deficit type model. Um, so the the rituals of your leadership team or the and the communication styles and all of the culture again right we're talking culture um is is essential um and i guess personal experience have seen have seen both of those things exist in the organization that i work for and and it's the intangible energy stuff that i i think is um like a measure of it for me and it's felt personally it's felt um within the teams it's felt across the organization um that sounded really waffly and weird but um hopefully it made some sense <laughs> yeah great and yeah totally total what you're saying yeah curiosity see from pam so important eh? um, in what Garth was saying, what Claudia was saying as well. And, and then we only connect when we pause. Like it's a really big question, eh? what are the quality of your connections in your organisation? What is the quality of the container that holds all the work? What's people's sense of belonging and as Claudia said do they have they got permission to that failing is part of learning and we require it and yeah okay shall we move on we've got just a couple more things to say and then we'll wrap up our session I think what's coming through on the chat, we can we can turn into, we can feed it back to you. There's some amazing um, thoughts and ideas in there. So we'll make that part of what comes back to you. Um, just in terms of this, this final, some ideas from us around 
mix this. Okay, so I'm not sure how far you got in your breakout rooms around what you might do next, but here's just some ideas around checking in with your team about how they're feeling about where you're at now with your strategy, what they're loving, um, what needs to change, checking with some other people who are close to you um, around how they're feeling about it, how connected they feel, and depending on what people want to uh, do, then co-designing a, a process uh, to recreate that. One that is about being present, being in your calm space, being embodied um, and moving together. There's those elements of innovative strategy um, you can check in with and really just have a play. And um, you know your space best, obviously. Um, and check in with how you feel about what you develop. The feeling around a strategy, around uh, a moi moi a vision is so important whether people feel engaged and connected with that and just give some paths a go. We've got some... Yeah, I'd just add to that, eh? Like there's some, there's a lot written on what Garth's talking about too, but this pro, the discipline of prototyping is so good to, to look at so that you're doing, learning as you go, reflecting as you go. Um, we've got some resources as well that we can mm. send out. But. Yeah. This first one is around innovating in the arts and that's just come out. Um, yeah, Dave Wilde's a futurist. Rios partners um, look at transformation scenarios. Um, yeah, there's a, a range of resources there which we will send to you. So now I'm going to hand back to Louise to close our session with a karakia. There's also a, a survey um, that's going to be put in the chat. <laughs> it's just four questions. Um, we'd love your feedback on how you found a session. Over to you, Louise. Yeah, so a huge topic in a short amount of time, which we could spend days and days and days on. But hopefully it's been enough of a taster. And um, we're also going to be doing something a bit later in the year, um, probably Rach and I, on restorative kind of leadership, restorative systems work. So how do we include the the restoration in the way that we work. There's so much to restore, so keep a look out for that. But let's just, before I do the final karakia, let's just take a few breaths together. Let's do our first breath together for yourselves as walking innovators. That that part of you comes to life. Breathe life into it. And then let's take our next breath together for each other all here doing amazing work. And may we all become wise navigators of this very um, gritty time. So we're not navigating alone. And let's take our next breath for Papatuanuku that we, in this time again, may include her and what's needed as our broader nest we all sit in. And let's take a breath together for all our ancestors, all our tupuna, Who are with us seeing if we can help change some of the patterns of the past. And let's take our final breath together for the future that wants to emerge through us. I deeply honour all the work in this room. Manawa mai te mauri nuku, manawa mai te mauri rangi, 
ko te mauri kaio, he mauri te pua, ka pakaru mai te pō, tai mau te mauri, haumi e, hui e, tāiki e. Yeah, we call on all the life forces around us in support of the mahi. Thank you, everyone. Feel free to put anything in the chat as you leave. And yeah, stay, stay tuned. <laughs>